I'm Ann Mahaffey, and I'm an Applications Engineer working on web tools here at Analog Devices. And in this video, I'm going to talk about distortion that's caused by this resistor getting too large. Um, and just to, to, to introduce this topic um, and, and segue from our previous videos, so we've, I've spent a lot of time talking about this kickback. Um, and so we've got this kickback that um, you, you might have an amount of, of this kickback that doesn't settle by the end of the acquisition cycle. And this non-settling can lead to DC and AC errors. Um, so a AC errors would be things like THD or distortion um, and noise. And this kickback related error, um, if you're troubleshooting on the bench, is something that can be resolved um, or at least improved by slowing your sample rate down and making this acquisition cycle longer. So you can see here that um, basically this error term can, can, can get lesser um, as you increase this acquisition cycle. Um, so that's just something to understand as we get into this topic, but, but actually what we're gonna talk about has nothing to do with this. Um, so, so as I'm talking about this, keep in mind that this kickback related error is entirely unrelated. Um, so we're going to talk about an, an error that is caused by this resistor value getting large, um, and it's and it's not at all. Um, you can't improve it by slowing down the sample rate, and it's not at all dependent on on kickback. So what happens is this resistor it actually interacts with this capacitance and specifically it's the capacitance, it's the portion of this capacitor that is, um, it varies with the voltage across it. So we've got a capacitance um, that's, that's fixed. Uh, most of the, the value of this capacitance is fixed, but there is a small amount of this capacitance that will vary as this voltage changes and the, the variation is nonlinear. So it's this nonlinear variation that contributes to this uh, distortion, which is not a nonlinear um, AC error. And so it helps to understand why, why is it that larger values um, of this resistor uh, contribute to the distortion, or at least it's helpful to me. So just to put some math around the problem, we can look at this, this just the circuit, just the portion of this circuit that's related to this nonlinear capacitance. So if we look at the voltage coming in to the ADC or, you know, from the driver and it's going through this resistor and then through this nonlinear capacitance. And so what we want to know is, um, well, first of all, it'll help to know what the current is. So what's the current going through this capacitance? And to, to determine that, what's helpful to know is that the frequencies that we're interested in here are relatively low compared to the value of this capacitor. So this capacitance is, is very small. This variable part of the capacitance is very small. So the impedance of this capacitor is very large. So there's, there's not gonna be much of a voltage drop across this resistor. So we can assume that the voltage across this capacitance is essentially this input voltage. Um, we can approximate it to be that. So this current that goes through this capacitance is just that input voltage times the conductance, right? And then what we want to know to determine, you know, to, to quantify the distortion is what's the voltage drop across this resistance due to this nonlinear capacitor? Because it's this voltage drop, which is changing in a nonlinear fashion that's contributing to the error. So we, we're trying to drive a voltage to this ADC, but we're actually losing a, a, a variable part of that voltage um, before it gets there. And so this is our distortion mechanism. This is, it's this voltage change. And so what we wanna know is, what is the voltage that's nonlinear? And so that's just the current that's going through this RC 
um, times a resistor. So this current times this resistor And so what we have, so, and we, this is essentially what our distortion is coming from. So what we've got, if we just visualize this, so for um, cross frequency, we've got this voltage. We're gonna think of it as a distortion term. And let's do this as a semi-log plot. So we've got dB and we've got log scale. And so we can see that this equation is just gonna be a 20 dB per decade line. Uh, it's gonna, this distortion's gonna get worse as frequency goes up. So we can see that here. So as our frequency gets higher, this is gonna get worse. Um, and as our resistor gets bigger, that's gonna get worse. But for a given resistor value, Let's say we've got a curve like this for a resistor. And as long as this curve falls below, you know, what the specified distortion parameter is for the ADC. So the ADC is gonna have um, a, a distortion that's just inherent to the ADC that, that is in the data sheet. And so as long as you've sized your resistor so that this curve is falling below um, the distortion mechanisms elsewhere in the circuit, then this isn't going to, to be a problem for your circuit. But what you need to worry about is if you start, if you select a, a resistor, so let's say instead of the recommended resistor, and, and the recommended resistors in these cases, they're, they're in the data sheet and they're usually somewhere between, between 10 and 30 ohms um, and so let's say you you pick something that was you know you, you size this to be 300 ohms instead then this curve is going to to climb up and you might get to a point where for the frequency that you're interested in this starts to become the dominant distortion mechanism um, so you'll need to rethink this selection and again you know this curve will just continue to increase as that resistor is larger. So on the one hand, you don't want to make this resistor too large, especially if you're looking at higher frequencies where it'll start to really um, climb up. On the other hand, your driver, this driver is gonna be a lot happier if this resistor value is large. So if you're, um, there's, a, there's lots of drivers that aren't going to be able to drive um, if you put 10 ohms here or, or even 20 ohms. Um, but then there's some ADCs that are going to have increased distortion if you go as high as 30 or 40 or 50. So, um, so this is, this is the point where you're sort of between a rock and a hard place. Um, and it helps to, to, to understand how the driver's working and the ADC's working and to understand that this is the curve that's moving on you as you, um, change this resistor value. Again, this is a uh, distortion that will not change it will not budge um, as you lower the sample rate and as that acquisition cycle gets larger um, there are other sources of error and, and distortion that that will improve uh, but this is not one of them so if you're seeing distortion in your system that is worse than you expected and it's not uh, moving as you slow down the sample rate you could try lowering this resistor and see if that helps um, so that's just just one thing to think about as you're designing this circuit.